Well, hey, Grace Chapel men, it's good to be with you again this week. We're going to continue our study in James, uh, covering what uh, the, uh, the godly man looks like through this letter of James. So if you have your Bible, go ahead and turn with me and get, you, get it out, uh, flip to it, whatever you're doing, um, to look up the word and get to chapter 1. We're going to be in verse 19, and we're going to continue through the rest of the chapter. Hopefully we make it through the rest of the chapter. I know I've been trying to keep these things to 15 minutes. That was my original promise. It hasn't really uh, fleshed out that way, but I have a timer set now that I can see visibly and so hopefully that will trigger me to uh, try to try to wrap it up and, and, and get a little quicker on this. So um, chapter 1 verse 19, let's read. Know this my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror. For he looks at himself, and goes away, and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he is religious, and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives but deceives his heart. This person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the word world. Sorry. So, uh, that's a lot, of, a lot to cover right there. Um, I, I can't promise we're going to get through all of it. Maybe we'll have to pick up the second half of this next week. But really, think about this right now. What, what is jumping out to you? What have we learned so far in James? What have we gone through? What are the th what's the theme that's sort of been carrying this? And what now is standing out to you? Take some time, maybe pause the video and just maybe dwell on, on what, what these words are saying. Um, whether it's, it's to uh, your day, how it went. Maybe it's to your week. Maybe it's to something you're struggling with. But take some time right now and just, just think on those things. And when we come back, or if we're back now, if you pause the video, whatever it is, um, I want to sort of dissect what James is talking about in this section. So up until this point, we've learned about trials of various kinds that are going to come. We've learned that temptation oftentimes, if not all times, accompanies those trials in some form or fashion. So now James gets to this portion of his letter and he starts off with this interesting thing, sort of out of nowhere, because we weren't even really talking about anger or anything like that. But he says, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. So when we, we dissect that little phrase right there, what I think we get to is that James is trying to get the believer, get the brother, um, get us men to be people that approach the world around us and God himself in a humble manner. So he, he backs that up by saying, For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God, therefore put all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. So I sort of struggled with that word for a little bit, like meekness. What is what is meekness? And, and sometimes it's some it's sort of difficult to define or maybe... It's, it's a sort of a strange word. We don't use that often in our vocabulary. But, but simply put, meekness is power under control. Okay, And so we can think about Jesus. Jesus wasn't a wimp. Jesus wasn't a, a guy that just got pushed around all the time. But he also wasn't a, a, a super aggressive... Uh, he wasn't flipping tables over all the time. He was able to control that and use that when appropriate and when when the Lord's work needed to be done. And so this idea is you have have the full power of Jesus all encapsulated in a man and he's able to take that power and control it. He, he's not just flipping off all over the place. And so what I think James here is trying to get at is like, look guys, we know there's going to be trials, we know there's, there's going to be temptations, there's going to be things in the life that just rattle us, 
constantly. I mean, you guys work, you guys are at school, you guys have people that you sort of submit to or or maybe you're over and things don't always go our way or how we planned it to be. And then when that situation happens and it approaches us back and now now the, the, the situation has come full circle and now we're faced with this option of, okay, how am I going to now react and approach this situation? So James is really trying to get us like, look, we need to change what we're all about. I, I work in the world of construction. The world of construction, as many of you might know, or maybe you're in it right now, but uh, it's it's a very uh, high, uh, I say, elevated uh, emotional place. And I'm not, I don't mean like crying. I don't mean like everybody's weeping all over the place because obviously that doesn't happen. But what I mean is anger is usually what fuels and what drives most people and how they see that things should get done. You know, something doesn't go the way somebody didn't show up on time. And so anger is the way that we address the situation. Uh, uh, maybe we get more agitated or maybe we get more short or maybe we we uh, uh, just approach it in, in sort of an ungodly way. And what James would be saying and what he is saying here is like, look, when we're faced with things in life, we need to be people that are that are slow to speak we need to be people that are quick to hear don't don't get all riled up because that anger that you're producing is not going to produce the righteousness of god it's not going to relay to the world that you are a man of god and so when we are faced with these things which daily we will be whether it's at home whether it's at school whether it's at work whether it's driving on the road and somebody does something in front of us that didn't agree with what we thought should happen, there's going to be an opportunity again to be faced, or an opportunity to, to choose which way we're going to go. Remember last week we talked about this idea of the temptation that comes in the trial and the trial, and so when that temptation and the trial presents itself, we have two options. One is to look to ourselves and our own fleshly desires and to see how we would like to see the, the resolution of that thing. Or the other way, to look to Christ as our steadfastness. And so Paul, or James here, sorry, is trying to, to get us to understand that our, our world system maybe, maybe we've grown up in, in homes where anger was the solution. You know, you yell loud enough and something gets done. Maybe we've grown up or worked in, in climates where people are just screaming at each other and that's just the way it is. Or, or maybe maybe the, that's the tone of your home right now. And I would encourage you guys to take a step back and say, look, whoa, 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 what's going on here? You know, am I, am I showing off, am I showcasing the attributes of, of God, the attributes of a godly man. Am I receiving with meekness instead of being uh, abrupt or or harsh or, or being sort of proud or being being louder than everybody? Am I am I receiving things with meekness? Am I approaching the world in a humbling way? Now I'm not saying you know just lay over, curl up in the ball, and and let things kick you, but what I am saying is that when we, when we sort of examine the life of Christ and we see the things that he did and he was faced with and stuff, I don't ever really see him shying away from, from conflict. I don't ever see him really screaming at people. What I do see is his resolution to put forth the attributes of God, to show the world what godly character looks like. And so when James here says, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, we all know what the implanted word, that's, that's like saving gospel, that's the truth, that's, that's biblical scripture, that's what he's talking about there, implanted word, which is able to save your souls. So what I do like about James is like, he doesn't just say, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. He does say, put this off, 
but replace it with something else. If we have a tendency to slip and fall into these moods or, or crankiness or, or whatever it is, and I'm just sort of harping on this idea of just anger and moodiness because that's the passage we're in. It could, you can replace it with anything, sort of jealousy. You can replace it with um, snarkiness or, or whatever it is. But if, if we sink into these moods and, and that's our constant tendency to go that way, well, then that needs to be replaced. It's going to be hard to, to, just, to, to, to just put that aside and then not have some sort of an outlet. Is, does that make sense? I mean, oftentimes when addiction or uh, people with addictions, they quit. I, I have a, somebody I know who quit smoking, and then when they quit smoking, they started sucking on sick, or, um, uh, 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 lollipops, you know, suckers. So there's like a replacement. So think of the replacement here. Instead of constantly going to this idea of anger and this idea of hostility maybe, now supplant that, replace that with the word. Replace that outlet, replace how you react with a godly reaction. Put off and put on. Okay, we see this idea throughout Scripture. Ephesians 4.22, actually, if you have your Bible, why don't you turn over there to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22, and it reads this, it says, To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. See, and he actually starts off that, that section by saying, but this is not the way you learned in Christ, talking about, you know, your former life and your new life and, and being a person that is going to model Christ to the world. He's saying, look, you got to put off that old stuff. We don't just hold on to it and hope that God can, can sort of clean it up. He's like, no, it's, it's gone because you're a new person. It's done. And so... We take on this sort of uh, approach to the world now through godly lens. We now look at the world around us through what James would say, through the implanted word, which is able to save our souls. And so, what does that look like? What does that look like on a daily basis? What does that look like in my job life, in my home life, in my, my uh, husband role, in my son role, in my in my whatever role that you can find yourself in, what does that look like? Well, what it looks like is Christ shining through us in every every opportunity we get. We don't we don't compartmentalize the times when Christ shines through. We don't give him exposure here, but but shut the shades over here. We 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 examine how we are approaching people, examine how we're approaching God, and we we look inwardly and we say, okay, God, how can I work? Where do I need work on? You know, oftentimes we pray, and when we pray, we say, you know, God, you know, help me do this, help me do that, help that person do this, help me do that. But we don't often pray, God, show me where I'm messing up. Because sometimes we're blind to it. Sometimes we don't realize something, and, and that's what's great about being surrounded by, by, by people, and, and maybe you have a wife that's able to point those things out, or a close friend, or, or somebody that is able to say, hey, look, I've been noticing this for a while, but sometimes I think we can sort of do that introspectively with the Holy Spirit's help. We can say, God, show me what I need to work on. Show me where I can serve you better. And I think that's hard to pray because we can get into this mindset of like, okay, okay, if I can just accomplish this, then I'll be good. If I can just tackle this sin and, and sort of overcome it and not deal with it, then I'll be good. So God help me right here so then I can be good. But what happens, I think, is that as we sort of focus on these other things, there's other things that are constantly going to be creeping up because we all fall, fall short of the glory of God. You know, we're never going to be at a point in a life where we've completely su sufficed all requirements of any type of sin uh, conquering. You know, Paul, uh, even in, in one of his letters, uh, I think it's in uh, his letter to uh, the Corinthians, he talks about how he, he has this thorn in the flesh and he's prayed three times to God to remove it and, and he just hasn't. And, and so he's learned to 
find sufficiency in God's grace. And so all that to say, we, i got to wrap up because my timer is now at 15 minutes. And so all that to say is this, guys. As we approach or are approached by trials, as we are conflicted with different things in our lives, let's practice and try, let's try, let's honestly try to put on an attitude of meekness in those situations. Let's put on what Christ would show through those situations. Guys, I know we're going to get angry. I know we're going to have situations that just do not go our way. But in those moments, in those moments, we are able to put on a testimony before the world to show them that, you know what? My God is bigger than this problem. My God has already got this problem figured out. And so I, 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 I can... I can have no issue right now. I can be calm. I can I can hear what you're saying. I can hear you screaming at me, whatever it is. And you know what? That's that's fine. But my God's bigger than this. So we're going to stop there. We didn't get through the rest of the chapter. We're going to, I guess, we'll just have to pick that up next week and, and keep going. Basically, Paul's answer to, okay, how do we, or not Paul, James's answer to how do we do this? We'll read verses 21 or 22 through the rest of the chapter. Be doers of the word. And how do we be doers of the word? Well, we got to read the word. We got to know what it says. So I encourage you guys this week, please stay in the word. Stay, keep reading. Um, I have, I, if you guys don't have one, um, I, th I use this uh, study Bible for um, mostly for things like if something pops up and I just really don't understand um, this, this study Bible has some good commentaries alongside the scripture. So it's a really good study tool to show like maybe some, some words or some ideas that just don't, really don't make sense or, or we're just struggling with it. So I encourage you to pick up one of these. Um, Pastor Christian might have, uh, another, um, maybe suggestion if you don't have a study Bible, but, um, honestly the word of God is sufficient. We don't need a study Bible, but I would encourage us that maybe you're newer in the faith, maybe, um, have a, tr a little harder time maybe understanding um, just the, the language of the Bible. Just pick one up or, or find one and, and you know use that alongside your normal Bible study. So anyway, guys, um, praying for you all. Hopefully we can get back together again soon. And uh, I'll be seeing you next week. All right. God bless.